My phone. Uh, There's a number of phones here, sorry. Yeah. Okay. We got any white paper on there? White paper? No, mate, I haven't. Ready to go? <clears throat> Look, thanks everyone for coming today. Uh, yesterday uh, we conducted a unit in conjunction with uh, our regional um, police in uh, the southeast region, metropolitan north, metropolitan south regions, and the Sunshine Coast. The operation online distributors involved in the um, uh, supply and distribution of um, syn synthetic uh, drugs, in particular um, synthetic cannabinoids. Um, as you'll see, uh, a number of the items that we've seized are, are displayed down the down the rear there. Um, it's very important, particularly leading into um, an event such as schoolies, that. Uh, we get the message that trade as uh, legal highs and, and safe products are, um, have some very real dangers in terms of um, personal health and harms. And we've had um, significant anecdotal evidence recently in relation to um, uh, incidents where people have um, uh, actually died of and sustained serious injuries and other incidents. <coughs> Look, um, some of the substances that we've seized um, uh, have contained a, a substance called a drug called um, alpha PVP. It's a, um, a psychotic type substance, and uh, people um, suffer from um, uh, their body overheating, um, psychotic events, very irrational behaviour, often uh, leading to um, violent incidents where they uh, cause significant destruction and uh, often injure themselves as well. Are you sure these drugs actually contain any substances that are listed in the schedule, though? Yes, I'm sure. Like, these drugs we seized today have to be analysed, but we've seized other drugs with the same brand names, which have been analysed and are uh, contain illicit substances that have, have uh, either been within a dangerous drug, and that includes analogues, derivatives, or substances that have substantially similar chemical structure and substantially similar pharmacological effects. I thought those amendments lapsed to the uh, misuse of drugs regulation. The government still hasn't changed its position on that yet, it hasn't come up with a new position. What do you mean they're lapsed? They don't lapse, they're still in the schedules. Okay. Even, if they mimic the, even if they're not, the, the, the exact compound is not listed in the misuse of drugs regulation. We've got 22 uh, compounds scheduled, actually listed, which outlines that if a substance is an analogue, a derivative, or it has substantially similar structural chemical structure and substantially by definition. So you've got these ones because of the brand name and actually because of the substance itself? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
throughout Australia and, and overseas. Other international jurisdictions are obviously having similar problems with uh, these new synthetic compounds. Uh, it is an ongoing challenge for law enforcement and with the, the use of the internet, um, the distribution network is Oh, it's very concerning and, and like I said uh, initially when these things first were detected in, in Australia uh, there was limited information, there was limited research. There had uh, been some incidents um, obviously in uh, other jurisdictions, in the national jurisdictions and we rely on, on that information and that, um, that intelligence there. We work very closely with um, other jurisdictions and customs and the federal police and, and the health agencies because we are very concerned about the potential harms. And these synthetic, particularly synthetic cannabinoids, whilst they're not, and people call them synthetic cannabis, it's actually not a, a cannabis. It's, uh, it can be sprayed onto a piece of paper, the chemical compound, but often it is sprayed onto a herb or a um, pot puree, those types of substances, similar to cannabis. Now, the, the, the synthetic compounds in there have the same effects as, uh, or mimic the same effects as um, THC does in cannabis on the... On the uh, Impact. So, how do they compare to some, you know, mainstream illegal drugs? Well, look, certainly um, that, that alpha PVP, the, the evidence about um, it's um, it's very, very harmful. It's very um, uh, has psychotic effects, um, and uh, obviously has resulted in the death of one person and um, uh, serious injuries to another as a result of his irrational behaviour. So you're seeing an increase, you think, because of the availability. Is that why you've acted or...? Look, people are... Or I think people have seen, a, seen an opportunity to make significant amounts of money uh, in the distribution of these things, particularly marking them as legal highs. They're not illegal. You can't get in trouble for it. And, and talking about safe products, yet some of them are marked not for human consumption. That alone should send out a significant warning to people, and particularly our young people who often, you know, would read something and say, oh, this is, this is legal, it's safe, we can... to um, other illicit drugs, um, that should send the warning itself because uh, when people are making, you know, charging a gram, $35 for a gram, I don't think those sorts of amounts of money would be being, getting paid. Have you actually had a successful prosecution? We have. We've, we, we've had actual people plead guilty. We've still got a lot of matters going through court. It is a co very complex matter, like traditional drugs like heroin and cocaine and amphetamines and cannabis, very easily... Um, uh, be able to prove what those substances contain from a from a scientific analysis. What we need for these types of new drugs is that we need a scientific analysis and then we need uh, a forensic medical officer to talk about the pharmacological effects because there's no human trials and, and you know, the, the evidence, the, the research evidence there is limited at this stage. It's now about the significant harms that they could, can potentially cause. How concerning is it that the drugs are being sold and marketed as a, a legal high? Like, do you believe kids could walk in and think that they're taking something that will be completely safe? School is, for instance. Yeah, definitely. Um, and they're, yeah, they're distributed in, in small tobacconist shops, uh, alternative shops, um, some of the adult stores there, but also online. You know, someone can go online and order um, order uh, this thing, and they're saying, you know, they're on there the marketers are saying 100% legal. And a lot of the stuff we've seen is that people are saying, and they've even had these certificates from China, distributors from China, saying in fact contain synthetic chemical compounds that are scheduled or are, are come within the definition of a dangerous drug. So, and, and we've seen the vast majority of them have. So, some, there's been a, the odd one that's come back and it doesn't contain that, but the vast majority of ones we've seized do contain illicit. Like other drugs, you just don't know what you're getting sometimes. No, exactly. Like, you know, we've had, we've seized... You know, stuff according to be MDMA. It contains caffeine, ketamine. You know, um, so really, until it's analysed, you don't. You're not 100%. And that's that's the dangers out there. People are ingesting things that they don't really know what it is. And uh, there's, you know, some of the uh, unfortunately, some of the um, the side effects is that is lethal. Um, to or about these retailers who, who are doing this, really they're, they're putting people's lives at risk, aren't they? Yes, like, um, you know, they're taking, th there might be significant uh, monetary uh, gain there, but there's significant risk also. Um, certainly uh, if you have instances where people have um, died as a result of ingesting those, um, 
uh, I would suggest that the coroner would be very interested in um, where those where those um, those products w came from. Do you still need some more legal clarity about these kind of substances, though? I mean, the Queensland government's still looking at its legislative options, you know, about scheduling drugs and whether it just keeps scheduling more compounds or whether it tries to do it broader. Look, what, what, what do police want to see in terms of the regulation of these substances? Look, there's, there's no silver bullet to the illicit drug market, it, particularly in, in the current times. It's, ver it's evolving. It's, uh, we've got new and emerging substances, psychoactive substances that are... That Um, we work very, very closely with health agencies, with all the other law enforcement agencies, with the Department of Justice and Attorney Generals, um, and we look at you know, what's what's best for the community. And, and you know, the regulation and um, and the uh, strategies we put in place are all about reducing harm for the community. But is there enough? I mean, is it, is it easy enough to get a prosecution? Look, certainly uh, we believe that um, uh, you know, we've got a good working relationship with uh, the Department of Justice and Attorney Generals and the other agencies and we believe that there's a, um, uh, you know, certainly that we're, we're moving towards um, strengthening uh, these as, as, as strong as any other jurisdiction and um, it's an ongoing process. It's, it's a challenge for law enforcement but um, we certainly see that um, it's, a, uh, it's a significant um, issue that we, uh, we're facing and we have to continue to... Um, to look at uh, reducing the opportunities for um, new and emerging substances that come into the illicit market. The couple that were arrested, um, do you know what drug they're actually charged with trafficking? Just Alpha PVP, which is the oh. one that um, that was uh, resulted in the uh, well, the investigations indicated resulted in the death of that person in New South Wales. The, the value of the, sorry, the property, like the formal drugs to the NCs, <coughs> why was that done? Uh, because we believe that they were the proceeds of. Um, the distribution of these drugs, proceeds of, uh, of that, that offence. Is, is this something that you'll be um, targeting during school years um, to see if, you know, young people do have these sorts of products on them? Look, we, um, police get information from the community all the time and other, other sources. Um, it's certainly, um, at, at, particularly at schoolies time, it's something that we, um, we treat very seriously and uh, if, if we receive information about people possessing these things, we'll certainly be taking the, the appropriate enforcement action. How long does your scientific analysis generally take? How long would you expect to, to know? Look, we, look we, we've got a, a very good relationship with um, the forensic chemists at, um, at uh, Queensland Health, um, and often we can get uh, indications um, from uh, samples within uh, a matter of days. Uh, a full analysis of all exhibits um, sometimes does take, particularly these ones, does take, um, uh, can take several months. Uh, as I said, we don't just need an analysis certificate, we need a statement um, from a forensic medical officer to talk about the pharmacological effects of these new compounds. So really the, um, what, what results come back could determine if there's more charges in this? Oh definitely, we, our investigations are ongoing and um, yesterday was about um, the search and seizure of continue and uh, depending on the outcomes of our analysis um, whether people will be um, and, and the subsequent investigations whether people will be charged with further offences. There were 17 premises that were um, uh, where search warrants were executed yesterday. So obviously the, the people that are associated with the businesses uh, uh, that, that relate to these activities. Is it just kids or do you think there's a lot of adults maybe using these drugs as well? Oh no, I, I, you know, it's certainly not just um, the school leavers, but uh, obviously that's a significant concern for us. But I'd say there'd be um, a variety of different uh, age groups that would be trying these things. A lot of them seem to be pitched at kind of like sexual... Don't they? Well, some of them are, yeah, some of them are. Others are pitched at, pitched at just uh, being an alternative to cannabis. Um, and obviously cannabis is the most significant drug that's seized throughout, throughout Australia, so um, they're um, using that as a... As a um, monetary value. Are they only pitched as an alternative to cannabis or as alternatives to other drugs as well? Oh, no, there's alternatives to other drugs, but, I mean, the smoking ones obviously are, are pitched as an alternative to cannabis, but you've got things that are... They're referred to as synthetic cocaine or, uh, you know, things that allegedly give the sim similar effects to ecstasy and that type of thing. Well, we've even had people inje injecting it, you know, so, and, uh, and that was the case in New South Wales. Can you just tell us about those two cases, that, um, those two recent cases? Well, obviously those investigations are still continuing, but the investigations to date indicate that um, the... Uh, a male I 
think they tried some orally at one stage uh, and then they um, injected it and it was um, I think purported to be bath salts or that smoking slurry um, and um, they've then had a uh, episode where they a psychotic episode where they've basically stripped all their clothes off their bodies were massively overheating um, and uh, disorientated and they were located um, the male was taken to hospital and um, unfortunately um, passed away. An incident where a, um, uh, a male had um, caused some significant damage to a premises he was in uh, and it appears during that process he's um, uh, badly broken his leg or sustained a serious injury to his leg and which uh, later resulted in a, um, an infection and he had his leg amputated. Well, the main one for those two incidents is that um, that hoe, that smoking slurry, um, and uh, but there are a variety of ones there. That look, it's basically endless. Um, you know, we started off with something called chronic, and um, it's just a, an ongoing process where they repackage into other names and will use other chemical compounds. Um, so, it is, it, as I said, it is an ongoing challenge, and we work very closely with all the other agencies to to um, best position ourselves to respond to those challenges.